These are all black people, North American Indians. The Hebrews are also black people as well. And this is the education that they're not going to teach you, okay, in your schools. In my books, I cover a span from, from our ancient history all the way up into American history, which they're not going to teach you in the educational systems of America. These are not your teaching history books. Author and historian, Frank Zakan Jordan. Book collection is now available on Amazon. Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining The Mike Lee Show. Today, I have Frank Jordan in. He is an author, one of our great writers in the house. Finally, we get to talk to Frank. Frank, man, how are you doing, brother? Hey, brother Mike, I'm fine, man. And uh, hey, listen, it's a pleasure, and thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you. All You're praise welcome. to the most Thank you so much. We uh we don't get a chance to talk to a lot of authors. Uh, we've talked to a lot of, you know, sh uh, script writers and people in the movies, but it's really great to talk to a, a, an artist like you and your specific type of artist because you write about black history. Is that correct? That is correct. Unmentioned, unmentioned black history, those topics in school that they don't want to mention or teach about. So that's very important. Unmentioned black history. So you dig a little bit deeper than what's on the surface of things that they want us to, they want to tell us about this and that, but then there's some other things that we don't know about that you get to tell us about. And that's great. Absolutely, brother Mike. Um, it's it, it's more that they don't tell us than mm -hmm. they do tell us. Mm, gotcha. I like it. So tell me, why did you, um, why did you go into this type of writing? What 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 was what was uh, what what was it about this that fascinated you so much about Black history? Yeah, um, growing up in the seventies uh, in Brooklyn, you know, I, I lived there all my life um, and, until you know I became an adult. Um, it's just that our history is so marginalized, you know, in schools. It's almost like it's pushed in a corner. Mm -hmm. And what they do, they they pick and choose certain topics that they want to teach us about, and certain Black leaders, you know, so to say, that they want to teach us about. You know, um, just to keep us in a certain mindset, mm -hmm. um, where is that that we won't really, you know, push back too much if we found out? Because I'm gonna tell you like this: um, one of the greatest reasons why I do and why I research and why I'm into this so much is that um, our history goes far beyond, you mm -hmm. know, Martin Luther King um, and marching. Everything that America has said that they were, they actually aren't mm -hmm. in history so when did you realize you wanted to write oh my goodness oh man um i would probably say maybe back in 1989 maybe about 33 mm -hmm. years ago mm -hmm. uh when i came across you know the magnificent you know uh hebrew brothers and you know they showed me just a different trajectory as far as you know our history is concerned mm -hmm. um pretty much everything you know um you know that you can imagine that that we've been taught in school because look brother mike um you know when i went to school i'm probably a little bit older than you but when i went to school the only thing that i we'll, we'll that keep I, it at that we'll keep it <laughs> <laughs> right the only thing that we pretty much learned in school was you know you read judy bloom books you know see spot run see yeah. you know jane yeah. right and yeah. everything was really predicated, you know, I, you know, everything is really predicated towards, um, you know, white supremacy. You know, you open up a book, you know, you see white children, you close a book, you know, you see a white teacher, you know, you Absolutely. go home, you see white. So, you know, the things that are taught to us, you know, uh, great writers like Shakespeare, you know, um, his writings like Romeo and Juliet, Macbeth, mm -hmm. um, you know, King Lear, you know, guys like that, the Knights, you know, King Arthur. Mm -hmm. When you really go back and when you really dig into history, you will find out that all those people were black. black. Uh, Shakespeare, one of the best writers on this planet, and I always and I always make mention of this. Um, he was a black man. He, he was a black man. And when you read his dialogue, when you read his plays, uh, he make mention in all his plays about the characters as being people of color, even Romeo and Juliet. When you go to scene two, I think it's uh, act six. He mentions Juliet's skin as being dark, just like the night. And also Romeo actually during the um, whole play mentions Juliet's skin as being dark. Wow. How many books have you published total? Um, I have published actually four myself. Uh, three were actually, you know, published by a uh, publishing company. Mm -hmm. hey, but they've all been written by you. All and yes, only. Sir. yes, sir. Yes, sir. No um, publishing, all by me. Research, all by me. Um. 
How has writing and researching about our culture helped you learn more about yourself? Oh my goodness, you said it. The answer was in what you just said, Brother Mike. Mm -hmm. um, it gives you self-identification. Hmm. It gives you self-identification. Um, you know, if you ask six black people their nationality, they're gonna give you over a hundred different answers. I'm a black man. I'm African American. Hmm. Uh, Africa was named after uh, uh, Leo Scipio's Africanus. America was named after um, America Vespucci, which are two, you know, Europeans. So hmm. we couldn't have came out of those people family lines. You ask another black person, I'm a colored. You ask another black person, I'm Negro. You ask another black person, you know, I'm a Brooklynite. Um, I'm a Detroitite. I'm a. Uh, I come from a land, you know, Atlanta, Georgia. But what this does, it gives us self-identity. It kind of traces us back, you know, to the background of our origins and where we came from and the greatness um, of our people as well, too, that are over here in, in America. Because I'm going to tell you like this, um, they weren't just selling just a bunch of people during the time of the transatlantic slave trade because they didn't know anything, Brother Mike. You know, it was a goldsmith, doctor, herbologist, um, astronomist. It was a supermarket for people smart, intelligent Blacks to build up America. I always make this point too, Brother Mike, you know, uh, when we was when we was actually bought over here during the time of the King Dahomey Empire from the late 1500s up to the 1800s, I don't remember us stopping at any schools, any institutions along the way to learn anything. When we got auctioned off in uh, Virginia, Richmond, Virginia, uh, the border and the shorter, shorter lines of, of New York, that's where the stock market came from mm -hmm. uh, because they were selling livestock on Wall Street. That's where the stock market originally came from because they were selling livestock, which was slaves. I don't remember or any history book that I've ever read, and I've read over 5,000, maybe 6,000 history books. I've never read where when we was dropped off, we was in a learning institution first, mm -hmm. and then we went to the slave plantation. Mm -hmm. That didn't happen. We went straight, sold auction blocks, and we went straight to work. So they knew exactly what they were getting when they were selling us, brother Mike. We weren't. It, it, they didn't teach us how to read. You know, you it, uh, people that don't know how to read don't plant for you. They don't build for you. Benjamin Banneker, one of the great black men that engineered the White House. Mm -hmm. You know, he didn't have time. White America didn't have time to teach us these things. So we had to be a, a advanced, special people during this time to build America up. So mm -hmm. that brings about a great self-esteem about yourself other than, you know, you was just slaves and you was just listening, you know, to a massive whipping the hell out of you and instructing you and telling you to do. These were our forefathers. They were geniuses, brother Mike. Geniuses. Wow. Um, the myth is that black people don't read. Do you feel that to date? Is that true or false? Um, that's actually true. And it wasn't, it, and it wasn't the fact that it, it, it wasn't the fact that they didn't want us. It wasn't the fact that we couldn't read. Mm -hmm. It's the fact of the documents and the items that belong to our forefathers of which they didn't want us reading because they know that that would bring us back. Okay. To who we are and our strength. Um, how can, how can we, how can we not read when we came over to America, we were speaking over, over, of uh, uh, 15 different languages. You had some people speaking Arabic. You had Blacks speaking Arabic. You had them speaking Hebrew. You had us speaking English as well, too. So you have these people that came over here and, you know, somebody had to do some kind of reading, okay, you know, to build this great country up. So it wasn't the fact that they didn't, it wasn't the fact that we couldn't read. They just didn't want us reading what was prevalent and important to us at that time. Um, do black people read? That's a almost like a um, a prerequisite from slavery. Mm -hmm. You know, massive. You know, put that book down. Stop reading that book. Don't mm -hmm. read that book. You know, don't read the Bible. You can't read the Bible. You know, you can't read this history book right here. Mm -hmm. So it's not the fact that we couldn't read. It's the fact of the details that was in the articles that we were reading that would have brought us back to our strength. Um, let's talk about your first book. What's the title of that first book? And tell us about it. Uh, the, my first book actually is called uh, Not Just a Coincidence, uh, mm -hmm. What uh, Politics, Leaders, and uh, Pastors Fail to Tell You. Woo. What? Tell us a little bit about what's in that, man. That's amazing. Yeah, it, 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 look, it depends. And on that was your first book? That was my very first book. What year did you write your first book? Um, in 2010. Okay. Okay. Wow. Okay. Uh, so we're coming up on 22 years. Is it uh, 12 years? 12 years 
um, since your first book. Yes, that's correct. Wow, wow. Um, tell us a little bit about, just a little bit about that book. Because, hey, listen, listen, uh, uh, Mr. Lee, they don't tell us everything, you know, that goes to the politicians. It's always like, let's just say, for instance, let me give you an example. Um, mm -hmm. You know, white America has always uh, had this injustice about themselves where they reward, <laughs> they reward uh, their leaders for brutalizing for brutalizing us mm -hmm. like they give mm -hmm. them streets of they they give them their own street names like um mm -hmm. i'm you know me personally i'm you know i'm insulted that they actually still teach about george washington guys like benjamin franklin and thomas jefferson to your kids in school when any everybody knows that thomas jefferson had over 600 slaves george washington had over 600 slaves so what people fail to realize when you go to school and when you read about these people, you're actually learning about the people who was actually brutalizing uh, our forefathers. Mm -hmm. And they was the one who paved this country and they was the ones who set the standard, the Congress laws, the amendments, mm -hmm. uh, the constitutions. These are the same people who signed off on the constitutions that we- So call the forefathers, right? Mm -hmm. There you go, yeah. there, there mm -hmm. you go, there yeah. you go. And if you're in school, listen, brother Mike, and if you're in school, that's the reason why so many black kids and so many black, you know, youths and even adults, that's the reason why history is boring to us, uh, Mike, is because why? Because we're not shown the greatness of our history. If you go to class and you know that you're going to learn about some old lying politician, you know, by the name of uh, 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 Nixon and uh, Jimmy Carter, of course, you're not going to be interested because that's their history. That's good for them. But what about us? Every time we go to class, the only thing we learn about is either Shirley Chisholm, we learn about Martin Luther King, we learn about Rosa Parks. These are all great people, but they show them in a submissive uh, mindset, marching, going around, you know, we shall sing and we shall overcome. Marching and, you know, yes. Exactly. And, and when you read about these people and the way that they handled certain things and certain events, there was no pushback. It's almost like we were begging and we're still begging our enemies you know, to be part of a society that mm -hmm. don't even care about us. We're the only people who do that, uh, Brother Mike. We oh, always, yeah. We're always the ones who always try to infiltrate with a society or try to communicate and try to infiltrate with a society with a society don't even care about, or they don't even, they, they don't care. They give less about what we do, how we feel, and how we produce and act. Why, why do you feel that that is? Is it because of what we've been through through slavery, what we've been taught. Right. It's it's not only the way, it's not only what we've been taught, it's just um white supremacy to actually to, you know, to be superior or to mm -hmm. make yourself look superior, you have to really just dumb a certain people down. You know, yeah. you have to dumb yeah. certain people down. You have to hide their history. You have to always indoctrinate inside their head. You're nothing, you'll be nothing. We're the superior ones. Uh, we did everything. We're the geniuses. Albert Einstein, Benjamin Franklin discovered electricity, mm -hmm. um, you know, the theory of evolution. And this is what they push on our people. And this is what they push on our students. You know, you were nothing. You contributed to nothing. But when you go back in history, even to today, a, a black woman by the name of Gladys Mae West, and I always make this point, Gladys Mae West, she's still living. She actually invented the GPS system. The woman lives down in Florida and gets no credit whatsoever. No credit whatsoever. Ever. Gets no credit whatsoever. You know, but still they'll say, okay, well, Thomas Edison, you know, he invented the light bulb when the brother Louis Latimer was the engineer mm -hmm. who made the filament, engineered the filament. Okay, so the bulb can light up. The only thing that he did, Thomas Edison did, he engineered the glass okay into the shape form that it was but it's nothing if you don't have that filament don't have like, the, yeah absolutely but like the bulb up how can yeah. how can ben franklin how did our people <laughs> this is funny how did our people let mm. benjamin franklin get away with that one how do you discover a a natural force that was already here that the heavenly father put here called neurons and electrons and it causes heat and it's called electricity that's another one. Benjamin Franklin discovered electricity. Oh, come on. That's, come wow. on. <laughs> Out of the seven books that you have, do you target Black History Month? Or have you been able to just spread them out and put them out whenever you want to? Right. My, my books are actually, my, my books are actually, the last time I actually was notified, my books are actually in more than 40 
different universities, bookstores, elementary schools. Thank you. I, I really appreciate that. Means a, that, that mean that means a lot to me. That means a lot to me. Um, and during Black History Month, people call me two years in advance. You know, for Black History Month, like right now, my calendar is is, is filled. Um, but it's not just targeted to Black History. It's just Black History Month, February. No, our history spans throughout the year. Every day. Every yeah. day, brother Mike. Every yeah. day. You know, let me give you let me give you an example on something. Yeah. How um how America makes fun of our people and, and how they really don't care. Um let me give an example like um like like Peter Stuyvesant. Um Peter Stuyvesant was one of the biggest slave holders, was one of the biggest slave holders in New York City, um, in the uh, area of Brooklyn, Peter Stuyvesant. Um, and that's who Bedford Stuyvesant, uh, William Bedford. And they put the two names together, you know, and named it Bedford Stuyvesant. Mm -hmm. uh, Peter Stuyvesant had slaves. And a lot of people don't know that to today. Bedford Stuyvesant was actually named after slave masters. Peter Stuyvesant, you can look him up. You know, um, a lot of people don't understand and they don't know that. A lot of streets in New York City was named after slave owners, and a lot of people don't even know that. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, let's talk about your very second book. What was the name of that book? Can you tell us what year you wrote that book and what was that book about? Right. The second book was called uh, 500 Years of American Deception. Mm. And that book pretty mm. much curtailed us back to how did how did black images all of a sudden become white so when you go back the answer to this is the four such as the shakespeare's and all of these other ones that you mentioned earlier go ahead bingo. bro go bingo. ahead bingo i'm following bingo. right absolutely um if the bible describes christ as being black how come all of a sudden he turns how can he be caucasian absolutely moses dark-skinned man past when egyptian how did this happen 1400s during the Renaissance period, you had three main culprits behind that. You had the Popes of Rome, uh, you had um, Michelangelo, you had Leonardo da Vinci, and you had a guy by the name, artist by the name of Rembrandt. And to today, they make mockery by selling uh, a toothpaste in the um, in the stores called uh, called Rembrandt toothpaste. You can go to Walmart right now, you can look at it. And Rembrandt toothpaste is known for whitening. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, I can't make this up. You can go to the store right now and, and say, hey, listen, where's the Rembrandt toothpaste? I no, Frank, the crazy thing is I know exactly what you're talking about. I've seen it and I'm very, I have to say to say it, I think I might have even purchased it a couple of times. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about how, how well it whitens the teeth. Yeah. Abs absolutely. Yeah. A absolutely. So, wow, man. This is, this is a conversation that a lot of our people don't want to have. But we have to have it because it was done for white supremacy. Again, you know, to 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 dumb people down, to take away their self esteem, to lower their self morals, their identity, their integrity. You have to set yourself up as a subservient person, as a superior person. So, what better way to do that, brother Mike, is to take away all of the people that we look up to? Okay, guys like uh, Christ, guys like in the past, like King Arthur, and paint these guys in an image, in a form, okay, to their liking. So that's what they did in the 1400s. And when you look back in history during the time of the Renaissance period, the, the word Renaissance just means to renew or to redo. And the Popes of Rome paid these guys a commission to redo all the dark art, okay, that was before them. Because before that, Brother Mike, you couldn't find no Caucasian art before the 1400s, to be mm. honest with you. You couldn't find no, really, really no Caucasian art. But this is what happened during the 1400s for white supremacy. But you know the person that posed, you know, for the, uh, you know, for the image, okay, of Christ is a real man. His name is Caesar Borgia. That's his. That's his name. He posed and modeled for the picture of Christ. His name is Caesar Borgia. Because any time before that, you can still go over to Jerusalem. You can go over to Rome, and they still have in the temples, even as far as Russia and Moscow, in the temples over there, they still had pictures of the disciples, Moses, Christ, uh, Ezekiel, Elijah, and all of these pictures are in my books where these pictures are still over there, these paintings that are still over there in the in the in the catacombs mm -hmm. down in the um uh in the in the churches where they still have those paintings okay of 
of dark images. And if you notice this, brother Mike, mm -hmm. all of the all of the dark images, okay, you notice that everything is just chipped off and the color, and you can't really mm -hmm. see them that good. And uh -huh. you know, the, but you notice that every Roman statue, every Roman painting, it's like it's brand new. Brand new. Yeah. It's like it's brand new. But when it comes to our art, why is the nose is chipped off and you see half of it is is, is bleached? Is it looks a certain color? It's a you know it's it's deformed and and the sphinx nose over in in Egypt the, the nose is is blocked off. And why left. was that, Frank? Why Napoleon Bonaparte? Hmm. Napoleon Bonaparte. Two 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 names. Napoleon and Bonaparte. Um, same thing. White supremacy. You know. Uh, look, listen. Let me tell you something. If we look back in our history, guys like King Arthur, uh, Robin Hood, uh, these guys were all black men. I'm not, look, a, a lot mm -hmm. of people, you know, and, and I've taught before professors, you know, in colleges, and a lot of people say, this guy's just on a black, this guy's just on a black trip. No, <laughs> not really. It's just that everyone that they deem, okay, to be someone in history, they've taken the credit for it. But when you go back, and and, and I have, thousands of pictures in my books um even a fellow um mm. aristotle socrates these were all black guys i mean frank they, the, frank the names listen to the names of them it's, i mean go ahead i'm sorry but I mean, no you're good you're, you're good brother you know a fellow shakespeare socrates you know these are all black men that's the reason why they created hollywood you know, back in, it was a German guy that created Hollywood because you can pretend to be a fictitious and you can do anything you, you want to be. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at the movie Rocky. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at look at Apollo Creed, how big and cut up he was and he was beating Rocky up. Come on, man. And then all of a sudden, the music come on, brother Mike. Da -da -da -da. Right, yeah. da -da -da. <laughs> all of a sudden. And look, that, that was a movie that was, people didn't catch it. That was a stone called White supremacist movie right there mm -hmm. the show the show black people no matter how big you are we still gonna come on top yeah, yeah. rocky should have been gone out of that fight the first round apollo was good but it's hollywood you go see that it sinks into your mind you know he's beating us up apollo he's a big big black muscular guy all of a sudden he's beating him up all of a sudden in the end you know who won rocky <laughs> oh, oh, what they what what it does here? Yeah, subliminally. There you go. Um, there you go. Um, do you feel that anyone can write? I know that we all have a story, but are there some fundamental teachings and theory and how to write a book, how to tell a story? Um, can anyone do that? No. No, um, mm -hmm. you, you, you probably would have had probably 500 million Bibles out here if that was the case. Mm -hmm. um, and, and one thing, you have to have a passion for it. I think mm -hmm. that everyone can't do everything. Mm -hmm. um, you always want to write a story how you, how, my method to writing, um, Brother Mike, is I always want the questions answered mm -hmm. that I would ask, that I was always curious about. That's my method to writing. Like, why is, you know, why is the streets named the way they are? Why is the bridges? Why is everything predominantly the United States named after George Washington and, and Christopher Columbus? These guys were thieves. You know, why is everything named after them? Why do North American Indians don't have their land anymore? Why does certain people always try to emulate uh, uh, the colored people, you know, black people, mm -hmm. uh, we don't get no credit for anything. Um, black women should sue a lot of people. I'm not going to name anyone. Right, but right. That should be a court case right there where, you know, mm -hmm. hey, you got a lot of black women that need to sue, you know, because mm -hmm. that's um, infringing, you know, on people's. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, man, go ahead and preach, bro. <laughs> you know, so. I've always wanted to be curious about these things, mm -hmm. you know, as far as the way that our neighborhoods are set up, the zoning, the schools, uh, why don't we have certain things in our neighborhood? Is it because of the educational system? Is it because of the jail system? Is it because of the drug trafficking? Is it because of, you know, we're just a bunch of people that just can't get it right. What we just can't, no matter what happens, we just can't get it right. 
what's going on for years and for years and years? Why are we still marching? Cops, still shoot, march. our kids, kids, shoot our kids down. Why is this still going on? I've always wanted to be that kind of purpose. Hypertension, blood pressure. I got a, I got a total medical book that breaks down all the ingredients that you see in the supermarkets that they put up on the sign that the uh, FDA and the CDC put up on the scientific names, the ingredients purposely because they know that black people are not going to take the time to look on the back of a food ingredient and see a 16 word uh, ingredient uh whatever if it's if and it's, then go look it up and see break that word down to find out what is it what is there it there you go there you go if they really put what was in the food they wouldn't make any money trust me when i tell you so they got to put it up under those names because they know that people are not going to look up things like phosphate things like glucose think th things like yellow dye number five and number six i'll be mm -hmm. just going to the supermarket if it's sweet they'll buy it they'll just throw it in the cart yeah. yeah i was looking at something uh probably about i think it's been about two years ago and it was about how hot dogs are made and then there was a microscope on like, they pull this microscope out or whatever and put the hot dog under the thing and you could see what the living mechanism whatever was in the hot dog frank i loved hot dogs bro <laughs> bro hot dog i never ate another one i said i, I will never eat another hot dog uh be Good because for you yeah, but it's but it's but you you right on point because of the things that have been hidden from us and what we don't know makes us ignorant, but right. what we do know makes us stronger and gives us power and gives us knowledge. Absolutely, and we need to take the time to find out these things because this is stuff that's going in our body, and it impacts our brain, it impacts our mood, it impacts our spirit, and everything that we need to survive. You know, and become a good and healthy person. We don't listen, listen, brother Mike. We don't we don't ask questions anymore. We don't we, we, we don't ask questions anymore. The same people that were so hell bent on making our lives a, a, a pure catastrophe for over 400 years, we've actually made them comfortable, you know, through our vulnerability and through yeah. our ignorance. We've actually made these people actually comfortable, you know, the same people hell bent through their laws, through their constitutional amendments, um, you know, through their bill of rights, everything that was set up. In the bill of rights and the amendments um even the emancipation mm -hmm. let me give you let me give you a quick Come example yeah let, let me give you a quick example the emancipation was signed i think in uh 1863 mm -hmm. um 1863 1865 um during the time and this is something they never teach you in history during the time when the emancipation was signed you had a place called natchez mississippi and i i got to bring this out Mm -hmm. where you the slave uh, uh, slave holding was, was like drinking water down in mississippi during that time when the emancipation was signed you had you had about maybe a hundred to two hundred thousand slaves that didn't have anywhere to go they hung around natchez mississippi didn't have anywhere to go um so what happened was the confederate soldiers actually re-enslaved over fifty thousand black men and black children the Confederate soldiers during the time of 18, 1865. And what they did, they literally worked these people to death. And that was a constant, that was a black concentration camp. There were more black concentration camps in the South after the Civil War, okay, than it all was in Germany. This is facts. This is this is facts. Um, they don't talk about that. It was black concentrations all through Mississippi. Okay. You had some that was down in New Orleans as well, too. After they worked 25,000 men, women, and kids for one period, threw them over the cliff. Natchez, Mississippi. This hmm. is something that they won't tell you. It, this is something they won't tell you in school. It was called slavery after slavery. Look it up. Hmm. Wow, that's deep. It's called the Devil's Punch Bowl. And to this day, they got a marker, very small marker where the people actually was thrown over the cliff. Uh, 20, I think it was maybe 20, 20,000. Um, some accounts is 20,000, some accounts is 25,000. Men, women, and kids within a one year period, they worked them to death and threw them over this cliff. And that place still exists to this day too. I myself, I visited and took pictures. The Devil's Punch Bowl. Oh, yeah. The Devil's Punch Bowl, brother. Absolutely. I've heard, I've heard someone speak on that before. Right. But it's been so long ago, I don't remember. But I've heard that before. That's but the emancipation was signed. 
the emancipation the emancipation was signed and we and, and we was free the confederate soldiers was rounding up people back then uh, uh uh brother mike they rounding up people back then putting them back into slavery and then you had accounts where i've read uh, uh more than probably 100 accounts where the slaves used to write letters and they was like good my goodness they said we'd rather be back on the plantation the way the confederate soldiers are treating us <laughs> they said it was three times worse mm. Wow. Wow, man, that's crazy. That's crazy. Um, let's talk about your third book. Um, what was your third book about? It's called The Greatest Show. It's called The Greatest Show on Earth, The Destruction of a um, of a Great Nation. Mm -hmm. um, that book goes into self-hate. And what that book entails is that what they taught us over a period of, of time, the melanin in our skin is bad. Ours is good. But when you do the scientific research on melanin, melanin protects you from skin cancer, melanin protects you from thousands of diseases. You have to have melanin in your skin to protect the inner layer, okay, for mm -hmm. diseases, a host of diseases. These things were taught to us, um, the minstrel show with the dark faces, everything that's always been, that they've always taught that was bad for us is always now good for them. Mm -hmm. Lips skin color black women were always black women were always endowed naturally you know their breasts you know uh, uh sarah bartman which they mm -hmm. made fun of her you know uh years ago made her out of a circus attraction and died yeah. of uh, venereal diseases yeah. yeah um they've always made fun of the way black women were were naturally gifted and their shape uh but speed it up you know 300 years now later you know everyone wants to look like black women but they taught us to look like ourselves, brother Mike, is no good. The skin, our naturally kinky hair, which we can do anything with. We can braid mm -hmm. it, we can lock it, we can cornrow it, mm -hmm. we can straighten it. Straighten we can it. do anything mm -hmm. we want to with our hair. Yeah. Okay. So why back in the 70s and why back in the 60s, that's where all the um help me out here, brother Mike. That's where the playing the dozens. I know I grew up in the projects in Brooklyn and we called it ranking. Ranking. Okay? <laughs> you know, hey, look, brother Mike, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You like right, right. Yeah, we called it ranking in Brooklyn. And look, let me tell you something. Growing up in the projects, we had plenty of material all day long. We had plenty of material. So we would talk about your mother. We would talk about you're so dark. We would mm -hmm. talk about your hair is nappy. We would mm -hmm. talk about your skin color. We would talk about your mama. We would talk about your father. But this is what was taught to us. Mm -hmm. You know, we would call people darky. We would call people. But in all actuality, to have dark skin is better for you. That's mm -hmm. a royal complexion. You know, and to have le the less melanin that you have in your skin, mm -hmm. the worse are the worse off that you are. You're susceptible to melanoma. You, you, look. The, 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 the skin cancer alert don't apply. <laughs> <laughs> Look, the skin cancer alert, the skin cancer alert is on high today. It's on a level 10. That yes. doesn't apply to us, brother Mike. doesn't apply to us at all. That doesn't apply to us. The, the, the melanoma alert, the skin alert, you know, the, that doesn't apply to us, brother We just Mike. sweat it out. We just sweat, wipe the sweat, keep on going, glow. We that's glow it. in it. We glow that's in it. it. That, that's it man that, that's it you know we don't really need you know uh, due to the fact that the uh that the aerosols and the radiation done busted in, in the ozone layer up over a period of time now the sun really doesn't have any help it's just direct um the sun is is just direct on your skin now almost to the point where it seemed like it's hotter than it was when you and i were kids growing up and running around we can Play in the sun all day long. Mm -hmm. You can't stand in the sun now for five minutes now without. Oh my goodness, it's, it's hot, you know. And you have, and, and you're almost forced to put on SPF 30 or SPF, oh, okay. yeah. you know, some kind of skin protectant to put on. But back in the day, you know, brother Mike, we didn't put on no skin. We didn't put on anything 30, 40 years ago. We didn't put on anything. We played yeah. all day in the sun. Yeah. We didn't have it to put on. A a absolutely a absolutely so that's basically what the book is all about you know loving ourselves you know as far as what they taught you know what was bad for us our skin complexion the way you know and, and what they did to make fun of us even when you look back on this um on the 70s show um like good times the way they kind of had like uh jimmy walker with the eyes bugged out you know the big you know the uh, exaggerated lips there's nothing wrong with having full lips nothing wrong with having full lips at all people pay big money Okay, to have full to have full lips that the black man and the black woman has. 
steroids wasn't when steroids was introduced back in the 60s for uh, uh for bodybuilders that wasn't steroids wasn't meant for us that wasn't a drug of choice for us mm -hmm. that was white american men doing that in bodybuilding to catch up to the naturally gifted black man uh -huh. because we're naturally is, is we're naturally endowed that's something for them mm -hmm. they were trying to catch up, catch up yeah mm -hmm. not for us steroids we don't need to take steroids mm -hmm. wow not at all um how long how long does it take you? No, nope, let me put it to you this way. What's the longest it's ever taken you to get a book done? Man, now, I know that could be a big question because every book has its own life, its own story, even if it's connected to your the, the book before or if inspired by that. But how? what is that process for you? You know? Hey, Hey, brother Mike, I'm gonna tell you like this, man. Um, it, it, it's 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 tedious, you know. And like when I was actually writing my first book, I actually had my second one in my head already. Mm -hmm. I actually had my second one in my head already. Mm -hmm. Um, but the time that was between that, it was probably a year, maybe a year and a half, maybe two years before I actually, you know, had you know to come up anything that's educational and that is gonna benefit us in the unknowing and unmentioned that's what i write about mm -hmm. i write about things that i would want to know things that your parents are scared to talk about things that your dad never sat down and talked to you about everything is pretty much just predicated and everything is written down for us you know everything is written down for us you know through you know a systematic system called mm -hmm. the american education system mm -hmm. we don't ask questions uh, that goes back from slavery, whatever slave master says, our forefathers learned that behavior and they passed it on to our parents and our parents kind of passed it on to us where we just don't ask any questions. It's uh, do as I say, you know, and yeah, say as yeah. I do. You know, you never yeah. ask your dad no questions, Mike. I mean, I oh, you know, you be, be, you're too afraid to ask, what, what are you asking me? Yeah, yeah, it was that sort of, yeah, absolutely. Right, and that's what was branded and, 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 and that's what was branded on us during during slavery you know you wouldn't dare look slave master in the eye and ask him why is he doing certain things mm -hmm. you will get punished the mm -hmm. same way it was bred into us okay as kids you ask your father something if you want to your father uh, you you won't have no teeth in your mouth <laughs> right right well look man we're going to take a short break we're going to come back with more uh, on this incredible topic with you. Everybody, it's Frank Jordan right here on The Mike Lee Show. We'll be right back. These are all black people, North American Indians. The Hebrews are also black people as well. And this is the education that they're not going to teach you, okay, in your schools. In my books, I cover a span from, from our ancient history all the way up into the American history, which they're not going to teach you in the educational systems of America. These are not your teaching history books. Author and historian, Frank Zakan Jordan. Book collection is now available on Amazon. Hello, everybody, and we're back with Frank Jordan right here on The Mike Lee Show, sponsored by Jamie Foster Brown, Sister to Sister 2.0. Frank, we're back, man. I want to talk about um, book four and five. Let's talk about that period of time. What was in your brain? What were you going through? And let's, I don't want to combine the books because I don't know that they that they have anything to do with each other. But tell me, why did you write book number four? What was it about? And five. And around what time, what time are we talking about? 2000 what? 2000 this. So tell us about four and five. We're, we're in the year 2022 right now. Book four That's and five, I, it was um, uh, the uncovering of the evil of America, what the CDC and the FDA failed to tell you. That I wrote in the year 2016. That was number four. Uh yes, sir. That was <sighs> also, uh, yeah. That was that. That was number four. Okay. That was, that was number four. And um, what I actually, you know, again, you know, um, uncovered and unwrapped was, you know, I, you know, me, I've I've had a 33 year head start on a lot of people as far as my diet and, and you know how I take care of myself. And, um, you know, I said, what a wonderful thing would it would be, how, how great would it be if I went into a supermarket and looked on the back of labels of food and broke down these ingredients 
that are in food and and might I, I I'm gonna tell you like this I would say eight I, I would probably say maybe eight out of ten products that I picked up had some sort of cancer causing ingredient in the food um you know things like polysorbate um things have pork in it you know under different names you know the alter people's you know religion you know their diet yeah. um it's just you know yellow dot number five the things that are in the medications to keep you going back uh point in case is this to get you um, get when, you addicted yeah right exactly exactly point in case is this when the north american indians when they were here before columbus they weren't taking tylenol or they weren't taking Motrin. Um, they weren't taking chemotherapy, you know, uh, inside our bodies, brother, Mike, you got water, you got magnesium, you got iodine, um, you, have, you have potassium. There you go. You have potassium. You have the ingredients inside your body that connects with the natural earth and the herbs and the fruit that it yields back. Mm -hmm. We have calcium inside our body, you know, um, natural oranges that are, that are grown. You have mm -hmm. echinacea that you can grow. You have garlic that you can grow. Right. All the things that come from the earth are to replenish the cells that are in our body. Our body doesn't recognize acetaminophen and stuff like that. Now they got a class act suit on acetaminophen. If you take an acetaminophen, which is in every aspirin, if you take an acetaminophen in the last, last 25 years, you may want to call this 1-800 number. So, you know, there's never a case where you can take natural herbs that actually relate to the organs in your body and the elements in your body in the makeup of your body um lemons lime um you know you have burdock root you have uh elderberry leaves stuff like that is to replenish all of the nutrients in your body not going and getting chemotherapy which is something that's man-made that kill the cells in your body you know and 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 you know pretty much potentially you know, sad as it may seem, you know, you have a very limited time left on this earth. They tell you that people know that before. That's why a lot of times people say, I'm not, that's why a lot of black people say, I'm not going to no doctor. I'm mm -hmm. not going, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to no doctor because you'll come out, you know, finding out about things that are worse, that, that are worse than when you went yeah. in there. Yeah. So yeah. doctors tell you off the top, uh, brother Mike, you know, we're just here to treat your ailment. Mm -hmm. Herbs, what they do, brother Mike, the natural herbs, they cure you. They cure you. Penicillin, natural penicillin plant, okay, that actually kills off all bad bacteria in your body and bad ailments in your body and germs in your body. Penicillin plant, you know, simple. Um, they, they make it into a pill form uh, 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 of the guy Volk. Uh, made it into a pill form. Mm -hmm. And, you know, penicillin is as good as anything to kill off the bacteria in body. Turmeric, inflammation. Put that turmeric, put a little turmeric inside of tea, take mm -hmm. down any inflammation, it substitute um, the place of an aspirin. Um, mm -hmm. If they prescribe these things, these natural things to us to do, guess what? Doctors and physicians, they wouldn't make any money. They wouldn't, they, they wouldn't make any money because now people are being cured. Dr. Zebi, one of the most brilliant herbologists that was here on this earth, dealt with the natural herbs. That's the reason why he's not here anymore. You uh, from, from Honduras? That's right, that's right. You know, I, I worked with a young lady who went out there, you know, Lisa, Lisa from TLC died yeah. out there. Right, absolutely. Do you, do you remember that? Yeah. Well, you, I used to work with her. She used to send me pills from wow. Honduras. Wow. This was in 97. And wow. those pills, I'm telling you, the, no quicker than you could get them down in your, in your system they, you would just be flooding out. Right. You are, you know, just right. That shouldn't be in your body. Right. Toxins. Right. You know, within I think a week, I felt like flat. You know, like right. man, I lost <laughs> some weight. Right. You really hadn't lost any weight. Right. You just got rid of all that crud that was in your gut. You know, and stuff like that. So you're so right. It's just amazing that you mentioned his name because uh, the brother's not here with us anymore. But he was on to something much sooner, you know, and, and vast before it could, it could get to the masses. But his words and, and stuff are still out there on sites and things like that. But isn't it amazing that that man is not here with us? Absolutely, absolutely. And look, let me let me say this also. Herbs, natural herbs that yield from the earth have never been known 
to give anyone cancer. Mm -hmm. They have never been known to give anyone any mm -hmm. side effects. Mm -hmm. um, why go to the supermarket and read a, a pill or read anything or a doctor tell you, you know, that it's gonna, it may cause side effects. Herbs don't do that to you. Herbs cure you, okay? You and so it's everything a, has a side effect, yeah. There you go, everything has a side effect, right. So the things that you need to put inside your body, you know, the, the, the get back the potassium, bananas, you know, perfect source of energy, almonds, mm -hmm. you know, very good, you know, to put oil in your skin, coconuts, very good, mm -hmm. you know, for your bladder, very good for the hydration of your skin as well too. All of these things are natural and they're put here on this earth to replenish. And I got, guess what? They're here too to prolong our life as well too. Mm -hmm. But when man start tampering and man start putting chemicals and everything, that's when everything pretty much starts to go left. The ski experiment, um, mm -hmm. doing it in, 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 in Alabama, okay? Uh, when they, where they injected hundreds, okay? Mm -hmm. Of black men with syphilis, yeah. okay? And let the syphilis uh, mutate inside their body for over 25 years. Uh, mm -hmm. Sit back. That was an experiment that the CDC and the uh, uh, United States Health Organization that they signed off on. Yeah, go down there and experiment, you know, and inject these men, you know, uh, with the syphilis. And we're going to sit back and we're going to see the effects and we're going to come up with some medication, okay, to try to cure it. They mm -hmm. experiment all the time, all the time. That's nothing new. That's nothing new. Nothing new. Yeah, I feel they're doing it now. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. A absolutely. How else are they going to make money? You got to have some subjects. I'm not no, I'm not no, I'm not no lab rat. I'm not no subject. Yes, you are. Yeah, you are. Yeah. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Wow. Um, what is the most unethical practice in the publishing industry that you know of? Unethical? Mm hmm Wow. Man, how much time you got? Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Um... Wow, man. Um, I would say, you know, you want to know something? I would say when they still publish books, um, American history books, mm -hmm. and they glorify the leaders um, of mm -hmm. the society and they teach it to look, prime example is this, you can't get I don't care how much you try. I don't care how much people want to petition. I don't care how much you want to fit in. I don't care. You cannot get Miss Steinberg to teach black kids black history and slavery amen i think that is a mm. crime brother mike mm. okay no one not agree with it agree with you more frank wow no one knows us better than, than us that's the reason why a lot of black people don't get cured of mental illness when they go see a psychologist you can't have a black kid that has adhd okay and you can't sit him before uh, uh becky that has a psych, psych, you have to sit him before a black person that can relate, psychologically relate, to, psychologically mm -hmm. relate to them. So mm -hmm. the only thing a lot of times with a lot of Caucasian and European uh, uh, people, what they're going to do, they're going to just say, okay, well, take them to uh, down to uh, CVS. I prescribe some medication for them. Uh, take these twice a day at night. Oh, and here, yeah, here you go right here. Yeah. But, you know, we know each other better because we can relate to each other better. If you if, if you are in a one parent home, we can relate to that. Maybe that's causing mental issues as well, too. We can relate to that. Miss Steinberg can't. Maybe you have abuse in the, in the home. We can relate to that. Gang violence. We can relate to that. Um, depression. OK, that's big money. When your kids are depressed, when they go to school and they don't have the same clothes, expensive clothes, that brings upon a depression. Your kids go see a, 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 the, the, the school psychologist, you know, oh, we're going to prescribe them for these pills right here. You know, that's big money. Also, your kids being depressed, that's big money also. That mm -hmm. also curtails and, and, and goes into your kids taking pills as well, too, to get over the depression. All they need is counseling. All they need is counseling. Call up Brother Mike. OK, maybe he can relate, you know, to gang activity that goes on in the black community. You got about maybe 100 guys standing in front of the building or your residence where you live at. OK, mm -hmm. uh, uh, um, uh, Kyle didn't go through anything like that. Why would you want to sit your kid before a, a, a psychologist that hasn't had no life experience, OK, or the black experience? They mm -hmm. just strictly going by the books. 
Mm -hmm. It is strictly going by the books. According to uh, page 56 and five, no, man, this is, no. Right. right. Debo is waiting for me in front of the building, man. Mm -hmm. I don't need a book. Debo is live and in person. This is real. Yeah. We can relate to stuff like that. We can relate to stuff like that and give counseling, better counseling to our own. We had that during the time of segregation. And that's probably the next two books that I'm going to put you on the right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, wow, man. We could go on and on and on and on. <laughs> this, um... It's okay. Let's talk about the digital world and how things have changed, especially with publication and magazines and books. Um, how has the book industry changed since we have become a digital world? Um, do you have, do you feel that one day, Frank, we won't have books, we'll have some tablet that we were reading off of and that we won't have physical books? If you look over there to the, is it to, no, to my left, that's all I got over there. It's compact disc. I won't get rid of them. Right. I don't care what they do. My <laughs> CDs right. are gonna be with me till death do us part. <laughs> and then I have books from my travels. Whenever I would hit an airport, I'd go into the little space and I'd see a nice book and I'd buy a book. That book would bookmark where I've traveled, where I've been, you know, certain things, you know, where my brain was, what I wanted to read. I've always been, I've always loved books. I've always loved to read. That's the way, I, I mean, that's how we get knowledge. So to get rid of books would just kill me. Do you think we'll ever come to a space and time where we don't have books? Hey, you, if I had a dollar for every time I heard that, you wanna know something, the greatest, I'm not gonna say one of the greatest, the greatest book that was ever written is called the Bible. The Bible. Okay. And that's actually still being read, uh, you know, till today. Um, that's the good thing. Um, <laughs> that's the good thing. Digital Bible. Come, come <laughs> the King yeah. James, the digital version. Right. <laughs> they actually had that, right. Yeah, they did. Right, right. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> James Earl, right. James Earl Jones, right. He's <laughs> yeah, right. right, you know. And um, you know what? The internet had to get their resources from somewhere. The internet had to get their resource from somewhere. Yahoo, Google, they had to get their resource from somewhere and take the information from a book and actually put it and digitize it, like you said, and put it in a digitized way from books. Um, I think that going to the library when I was growing up, that was an event. That was an event, man. The book, okay, now you, we were talking about age. I re, do you, you don't remember the bookmobile. Yeah. No, you don't. You 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 don't remember the bookmobile. Yeah. There was a car, a truck right. that drove right. around in the neighborhood. Right, right. Where you could check. It was a bookmobile. It was a library on wheels. Now, it wasn't massive. It wasn't right. a thousand, a ton, you know, ton of them. But I remember that man because you know there was there was the there was the the, the urgency to to want to read or you know it being available for you now. And now it seems that we're scaring everything back because everybody's holding a, a, a tablet or a right. cell phone. Right. And we're killing our eyes. We're killing our brain with all of this stuff that's coming out of these cell phones and these towers and all of this stuff. I just find it crazy, man. I think we're in a crazy digital world, but I hope that we don't get rid of books. It's what's one thing, not at least not in my day and time. Right. Uh, I just like picking up a book and being able to scroll through that book, pictures, autobiographies, you know, things of that nature. So right. I was just wanting to get your take on that. Yeah. And big up to the parents, you know, and, and listen, we, 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 we have to we have to get credit where credit is due. You still have a lot of black parents who take the time out to sit and read with their kids. And even look, let me tell you something, uh, Mike, if, if you had a library card back in the 70s and even the 80s, even, oh, you was the man. If you had a library card, that was like having a driver's license, okay? You had a library card, you go around, I got a library card, that was like having a driver's license because now you were privileged actually to go into a real library and pick out any book that you wanted really? to pick out. And look, I, I used to come out of the library that was probably about two or three miles away from my neighborhood. It was an accident, a Caucasian neighborhood. And come from the library, I mean, with loads of books. Load, that put a smile on my face. You go, go... When you go to the library, it was like an event. It would be so crowded to go to the book 
uh, 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 desk and in, in certain books, you you have to be on a waiting list for certain to just to read certain books. Sorry, sir, that book is not in. It's going to be out two more weeks. You know, <laughs> and you put your name on the waiting list. You know, you're waiting to countdown to get that book. Yeah, right. Those days, those was those yeah. were good times back then. Um, th there's a lot. Li th there's a library that I love. Um, and it's called um, the NC State Library um, in Raleigh, um, in North Carolina. That library is 24 hours. That library is 24 hours. Um, they have, I think, maybe nine floors in it. Oh my goodness! And that's probably one of the very few libraries that I know of that when you you can go there 11 o'clock at night, 12 o'clock at night, and it is packed, just like it's 12 noon with students. And I just love that. I love even coming in here, even just seeing that. You know, where they still have millions of physical books where you can actually just read you can pick out you can read and that does something to you also because now everyone's getting you know and it's the parents you know for the most part mike let's not play with this it's the parents the parents aren't spending too much time anymore with their kids no more parents are letting the internet raise their kids you know parents in the kitchen they're working two three jobs you know to pay the bills and they come home they're tired they don't have no time really to deal with the kids anymore um everything teaches they teach digital ties you know internet the internet is teaching our kids you have to be careful with that too you have to be careful with that no oh, you're right you're right uh let's talk about your final book um let's talk about your six and seven if we can go right in there yeah. your final two books and what were they about and why did um, you write those books yeah i have wrote um my book uh we once were a family the disappearance um of black uh culture and soul um in that book i detailed uh segregation and how much we had during the time of segregation as a community. And a lot of people don't understand, um, and, 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 and this is not to step on anybody's toes, mm -hmm. uh, we were better off segregated than we were. We were oh, absolutely. A lot of people don't. The worst, thing we, have, the worst thing we ever did was bus schools. And, yeah, because they were no longer independent. We didn't have our own. There you go. There we started go. to share everything and it was oh you know yeah i know I, I could not agree with you more right how do we if if look uh chris columbus was the first person to come over here and and gentrify america he gentrified america you know he came over here and robbed and and, and stole the north american indians you know their gold and, and raped the women uh john smith like they show in disney oh you know pocahontas she fell in love with john smith no john smith uh uh hopewell of uh, virginia uh john smith what he did he kidnapped pocahontas and he raped her that's about it mm -hmm. and her brothers was uh contemplating on killing john smith but you know leave it up to disney but the point of the matter is this we actually had more brother we actually had more brother mike when we were segregated now we have less because now we're integrated now we're under the control of a debit credit system um when we have when we had our own land we had our own school we had our own pharmacists you know we had our own communities there was more than one black community and that's what um the book details there was more than one black community other than tulsa oklahoma you got a, a place right here in durham which was the first black wall street on east Parish street okay where you had black men we du bois um along with four other men who built um a, a life insurance a, a, a eight-story life insurance building um, you had a lot of prominent farmers, mechanics and farmers banks that was started, okay, by these guys that's still around today. Mechanics and Farmers Bank was started by black men here in Durham. And a lot of people don't understand that, that we were better off separated, okay, than we were integrated. Mm -hmm. As soon as we became integrated, divorce rates, marriage, okay, was at an all-time high. Uh, heroin opened up, flooded Heroes. the black community. Yeah education systems, water, irrigation system. Now all of a sudden they're finding lead, okay, in the, in the irrigation system. Um, the medical uh, system, terrible. Um, our parents, you know, most of the time your grandmother, you get sick, you know your grandmother tell you to put a potato on your leg or something like that, or she'll wrap you up in some in some tobacco or something like that. Go on some brown liquor and go to bed, you wake up feeling just fine. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. She didn't yeah. go, she didn't go to the store and get a bottle of Motrin to tell you that right, right. they didn't do that. You know, so you know, once this all happened, once we was integrated, so that book actually details um where did actually gentrification start, um, how it began, and why we can't do anything about it today. 18, remember this date right here, 18, 1830, uh, the Removal Act. Um, Thomas Andrew Jackson, 
Um, he put in place during the time of 1830, he removed the North American Indians, the Seminole Indians from Florida, worked their way all the way uh, through the West Coast, building railroads, and it actually pushed the indigenous people, the North American Indians, in a place now back then where they didn't even want, North and South Dakota. You can't grow nothing there. The weather's all jacked up. Um, it's, it's, it's a land that they don't even want. What happens in North and South Dakota? We don't we don't know. But is that place that place is never even talked about? But that's where most of the indigenous people were pushed at in North and South Dakota, and that's where the reservations um, are at. But we had a lot of black communities: uh, Paradise Valley, um, uh, Black Bottom in Detroit. Yeah, black communities. Martha's Vineyard was actually founded and started by black people. Um, you had the Car Sisters that started Virginia Beach that people don't even know about. You had a lot of black beaches that people don't even know about. And I'm not talking about black people coming to visit. No, acres oh, and acres yeah. and acres of land and beaches were owned by black people that we were swindled out of it because we integrated, okay, with the system. Wow. What's next for you, man? Um, those the, those the books are in your brain right now because <laughs> you just told us that a moment ago oh god where do you go where do you go next you you know what brother mike i'm, I'm gonna tell you the truth man um i i the book that i the book that i'm supposed to be writing right now especially coming out of covid and monkey pox and politics and all of this stuff we just i can't wait Right, absolutely. You, you know what your brain really is going to manifest, what it's going to do because just hearing how you've written in the course from when you first started, which right. was incredible, uh, to start off it's so strong with you being a first-time writer in your thought and what you were putting into the book, you know, and then to evolve and all of the different stories of information and how this helps us, absolutely, our culture. And we need it uh, to where you're going to be, where, what's next for you. So, wow. Imagine, look, Brother Mike, imagine if we were raised and we went to school and we knew that King Arthur, Sir Lancelot, Shakespeare, we knew that these guys were men of color, uh, inventors, uh, Louis Latimer, mm -hmm. John Burr that invented the, uh, the lawnmower, black man. Um, another guy invented the elevator, escalators. Um, uh, 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 women, black women invented the heating system, refrigerated car. McCoy, one of the great, Benjamin Banneker. Uh, I, uh, imagine if we grew up and we knew that these people were people of color, engineers, mathematicians, how great of a self-esteem would we would have had growing up yeah. mm -hmm. this is one of the reasons why they have to hide it from us and one more point before i bring out and answer your question i remember when i was in high school mm -hmm. they used to have trade classes in high school mm -hmm. where they would teach you a trade they called it shop class where they would have four periods of nothing but probably wood shop electronics but it was actually a trade that they actually taught you in high school, I was born and raised in Brooklyn, you know, where they had shop class, where they taught you mechanics. They had high schools that specialized in certain things. If you want to be an actor, you want to perform in arts, um, LaGuardia Ferrillo. Um, mm -hmm. If you wanted to be an, an artist, you went to art and design. Mm -hmm. If you want to be a car mechanic, you went to automotive. So these are schools, high schools. Don't you know, Brother Mike, in the late 80s, they substituted those, those classes and those trades for community colleges? Mm -hmm. Wow. They actually are, they actually made us pay for what we was getting for free in high school, because you had a lot of people that was going right from high school, black kids in the black community, going straight from high school to open up their own business. Mm -hmm. So they said, no longer, we can't have this no more. You mm -hmm. guys are going to have to pay for this right here. Okay. Mm -hmm. We not we cut. you guys are going to have to pay for this right here. So mm -hmm. if you think about that, the trades are no longer really being institutionalized in learning educational systems throughout America to trade if they they did away with it and now they insert community colleges now where if you want to learn a trade you got to pay for it now it's no longer free it's no it's no longer free wow yeah I think people um first of all obviously you sell the books individually 
Do you sell them all in a bundle? Yes. Yes. Um, is there, is there, oh, I'll go ahead. Wholesale. Um, yes. Wholesale. People can reach me, um, you know, through my email. Um, colleges, universities, they always buy them in bulk. You have individualized mm -hmm. bookstores that buy them in bulk as well, too. Um, when I go to book signings, when I go to lectures, um, I, I, I come back with nothing. <laughs> so, but what if somebody wanted to say, you know what? I saw this interview of this guy. This guy sounds like he is onto something. I want all the books. Is there a special to buy all of them, all seven? Yes, yes. Okay. Um, uh, go on Amazon, um, uh, Frank Zakwan Jordan, mm -hmm. F-R-A-N-K-Z-A-A-Q-A-N Jordan. And yes, it is. Yes, it is. Or you can just reach out to me um, through my uh, email, Z-A-A-Q-A-N-1212 at yahoo.com. And absolutely, absolutely. Um, you know, it's, it, it's, better, it, it's better to to relinquish and it's better to work with our people that want the information and, and, and want this education rather than overcharge people and not i mean look listen um, mm -hmm. you know that's not what i'm in this for you know mm -hmm. that's like i've given away thousands of books thousands of books mm -hmm. and felt good about it brother mike felt really good about it you know um if i sold one book i've done my job mm -hmm. I've, I've actually done my job um, but what's what's actually next for me is that I have a book coming out called Take Another Look. Um, and, and that one is, is the doozy. It's about the street signs, about the bridges. It's about where they still have slave houses um, mm -hmm. here in North Carolina and, and throughout the world, slave museums um, still intact that you can go and visit and, and, and know that slavery wasn't a farce and it wasn't a hoax. Slavery really existed. That's what they're teaching kids today, that slavery didn't exist. You know, the indentured servants came over here, the Irish, you know, came from Denmark. That's just another way of them incorporating mm -hmm. okay, themselves into slavery. When, when, when the indentured servants is a difference, indentured servants, slavery, mm -hmm. indentured servants, mm -hmm. slavery. They came over here for seven years to, to, to work the land. And uh, once they was done, they got actually, they actually got 40 acres, uh, 75 acres of land and plus some slaves. We mm -hmm. didn't get anything. We didn't even get our 40 acres on the mule. We're still uh, uh, waiting for that. That's what the American dream was all about. It was the indentured servants coming over here, mm -hmm. working, um, building a house, toiling their land. That's what the American dream was all about. Um, it, it never was a dream for us. It's a, it, it's a nightmare. 1776, you know, when the Declaration of Independence was signed, we were still slaves. So how's an independence for us? Mm -hmm. The emancipation wasn't even signed until 1865, 1776. Independence Day, 4th of July, boom, boom, firecrackers. Right. And that's what they did, brother. Okay, they celebrated by lighting gun kegs, shooting off cannons, okay, mm -hmm. that they actually wrote a document to keep us in bondage and keep us in slavery. And they celebrated, okay, by the control of the 13 colonies Mm -hmm. 13 colonies they had full control of the 13 colonies and they celebrated that's what they did and to this day we blow up firecrackers and shoot guns in the air and yeah. we don't know anything about it 1776 we were still slaves mm -hmm. the emancipation wasn't 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 signed okay until a hundred years later <laughs> so how was the independence day for us brother mike we were still oh, slaves boy boy you preach you, 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 you man today you let us have it <laughs> What a great show today, man. This is very informative. Last question for you. What are you most proud of? Wow, that's a good question. That man, that that you know what? That's that's that, that's a good question. Um, you know, all praise to the most high, number one, for giving me the brain in my head, you know, to even what a brain. Know, be the person yeah. that I have become. Um, and you know, the most thing that I'm really proud of is that. Anytime someone rings my phone, anytime someone emails me, anytime someone calls me up um, to do, you know, what you asked me to do, Brother Mike, it's always a pleasure. This is one of my greatest moments right here. Mm -hmm. Anytime I can get to do something like this, Brother Mike, this is a great moment for me right here. I'm going to go celebrate. I'm going to go get me a glass of wine as soon as this is over with. I'm going to go celebrate. You know, um, you, you know, it's, it, life is a celebration, Mike, and we yes, have to celebrate yes. it. Mm -hmm. um you know we have to be thankful you know for us even getting up there's no need to frown get up you're mad you're, you're disgusted you're frowning up you're mad for no reason you woke up a lot of people can't say that a lot of people can't say that yeah man i just want to thank you so much frank thank for you, sharing uh, with us today and for the books you've written and for thank you. opening up and telling us about these incredible stories and books that can help our culture 
I can't wait for your next book to come out because I want to have you back on, oh, man, to talk <laughs> hey, about the new book and let's do a master class on some of this stuff, man, and, and, and let's help help people because that's really what it's all about, serve, being a good servant help, and helping people and being a good person. So, man, I love your stories and I uh, you. what a great show today. Thank you for stopping by on The Mike Lee Show. Hey, thank you, Brother Mike, for having me. All praise to the most high. Thank you, Brother Mike. I appreciate Absolutely. you. Thank it's you. My pleasure. Keep up the great work. Keep oh, up thank the great you. Work. Thank you very much. Everybody, thanks for joining us today right here on The Mike Lee Show, uh, sponsored by the one and only uh, Jamie Foster Brown and sister to sister, Frey Zaquan. Zaquan? Zaquan. Z A A Q A N. Zaquan. Z Frank Zaquan Jordan. Yes, remember sir. the name. Remember the name. Go buy the books, folks. Go look him up. I think you'll get a whole lot out of these books. Uh, I'm looking forward to getting them myself. So um, everybody have a great day. Come back to see us right here on The Mike Lee Show. We'll see you all next time. Thank you.